Hey everyone, welcome to the Others Podcast. I'm your host, Steve Penny. We are back after quite some time away, but hopefully now back for good. Every couple of weeks, hopefully. Uh, joining me this week, friend of the podcast, hopefully potential new co-host. This is uh, his trial run. We're going to see how he goes. It's my third, joint third favourite Brazilian in the world. Oh, okay. My man Rafa. <laughs> What's up, man? Hey, thanks man, thanks for good? that. Who, who, but the question is, well, who is the, the first two? Ronaldo? Wow. I, I tell you what, there's a prize in it if you can guess. <laughs> if you can get okay. them, I'll give you a, I'll give you a prize. And if you don't get them, then other people can guess. And if anyone gets it, I don't know, I'll send you some stickers or some merch or something. But, well, before we get into it, give us your guesses. And let's uh, let's see what you think. Okay, so I will say I always say Ronaldo because he's the best football player of all time, and who disagree just don't know about football. <laughs> <laughs> You're a true Brazilian. You really are. <laughs> and I, I cannot think like every every time that someone tells me like, oh, I have like a favorite Brazilian. I always think about football. So I'm going to guess like Ronaldo and um, Ronaldinho. No, I don't know. I, I don't have any guesses. Anita? Right. <laughs> no, not quite. You, you, you've got one there. You've got one, I'll say. Okay. Well, so we'll, we'll leave one? it at that for now. If anyone else thinks they can guess... Like I say, Rafa is joint third, so you've got to get three other names. If anyone manages to guess them in the comments or send me a message, if you uh, if you get them right, then yeah, I'll send the prize your way. We'll make it worthwhile for people to do. Nice. <laughs> but yeah, so I think people have probably heard me mention you on the podcast previously in the past. People may know you from Instagram things such as Neptune's artwork, NERD artwork, sneaker artwork, becoming more and more popular and famous by the day from from what I see on Instagram. Yeah, yeah. We I, see you I, out there at the conventions with the celebrities, mate. We see you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Little by little, step by step. Let's see. <laughs> but let's see where these illustrations take me. Big things. I was just like my my previous um, Instagram account that I that I sometimes post in there like my illustration. I was just seeing, I was just looking at it and I'm like everything is related to Pharrell or any idea of the Neptunes. Like it's like a I illustrate illustration account, but all based on on Pharrell or Neptune. It's like it's basically a fan account. With all these illustrations. <laughs> there are worse accounts to have. Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. And I've got to say, you you have the fan account, but yeah, you know, I'm sat here in my office and I have. Hold on, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine bits of your artwork on my walls. All of them are obviously wow, like you know, Neptune's, Pharrell, BBC Ice Cream related. One is hidden away. One is in a box. I have to say, you did do me a very nice um, uh, Kanye one once, but oh, yeah, know, but Kanye has been you know uh, vanquished from this house for the time being. <laughs> uh, so he's okay. hiding away in a box somewhere. He's not on the wall anymore. Okay, that's fair. He makes me sad. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like things that don't bring you joy don't doesn't have to be on on your house. Like, yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. And I can add that to the notes. We can get onto some Kanye chat later as well, actually, because, uh, like I say, we've been away for a while and a lot has happened in the last couple of years. And Kanye and what he is and isn't doing and isn't isn't saying is probably one of those things, one of those hot topics. Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. Like I always feel like all my conversations goes to sex or kind of ass. <laughs> <laughs> Even nowadays, wow! Either of the subjects are are like kind of shameful. Shameful. <laughs> I don't know. One, yeah. One's maybe a bit more shameful than the other. Yeah, 
<laughs> and I've had lots of conversations with you, and I do feel that a lot of conversations we have 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 gone one of those numerous routes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. We've had all the conversations at some some point in the past. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right. So, should we get into? Um, I was going to say this week's track, but like I said earlier, we're not, maybe not here every week, but every couple of weeks. So, uh, the track for this podcast, and this is one that you picked out. So, we're going back in time a little bit now twenty twenty one years nearly, which made me feel really old when you suggested it, and I looked at the the release date. I just oh really old yes bro yes but it's a great track and we have previously overlooked it so i am glad you kind of brought it up and it is hot damn hot damn by the clips yes yes sir featuring ab liver pharrell roscoe pico chain what a lineup i i i think roscoe pico chain is top five best rap names ever like so cool like i will i remember i i never googled the why he has this name but i remember like i was watching the movie like i think he's the those two brothers from back in the day like the ducks or something like that i don't remember the name of the the series and the name of the i think it was a farmer or a general or a sheriff or something like that the name of the guy was roscoe i think it was roscoe p something it wasn't cold chain but it was something like that i was like whoa and when i and i was watching a movie the movie and when the guy said the name of it oh what the fuck like it's the same name like but it wasn't like it was similar so just then i i googled it and I'm like oh it was inspired by this movie okay okay no not the movie sorry the series and uh, we have to say, uh, I know it's uh, it's been a minute, but yeah, welcome home to, to Roscoe as well. He came yes. back home last year, I want to say. It has been a little while now. I know we're at the start of 2024, but I think it was in 2023. So yeah, you know, welcome home to to Roscoe indeed. I know he's uh, he's out there at the moment making new music. Some of it sounded quite good so far from what I've heard, bits and pieces on, on Instagram and stuff like that. Yeah, nice. Like I I was like when he get back to 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 Instagram and he started to post and, and I was like, Oh man, that's such a shame because Roscoe's Roscoe was so such a good rapper and and right now if you look at his Instagram or on his videos, like a lot of people is starting to comment in and he his fan base is pretty big. For a guy that spent so much time on on, on prison, like it's pretty g- good. Like, oh, that's good for him. He, he's like a a good movie. He's like a cult classic, you know. Like you know, the mainstream people don't know him, but those of us that do have kind of like we always remember him. We always know what songs he's appeared on. We always love that like crazy flow of his, and I think that's you know, hopefully that's been you know, a good thing for him since coming back home, like having that sort of um that fan base still there after like all these years of being away. Hopefully that, you know, really helps kind of, you know, give his kind of career that that kick it not needs, but you know, will sort of help him. And he doesn't necessarily have to start from you know, from zero basically, because, you know, I think he's still held held in very high regards by Clips, Pharrell, Liver, all these people that he's previously sort of worked with. Um, and obviously, yeah, still has that, like you said, that fan base out there as well. So hopefully that will, you know, sort of really greatly benefit him as he starts to get back into music more. And yeah, more. yeah, of course. Like I remember, like, I, I think it was like three or two or three months ago, like the clips did a, a concert and they brought like Roscoe P. And I was so hyped. Like, oh, my God. Like, can you believe this is happening? And I saw the the comments, the comments that like everybody was going crazy, like everybody was so happy for 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 the clips, for their it's like a reunion, you know? Because I remember those guys was like like a, a rap boy band, like but it was insane. And I always feel like the the Neptune's fans, I always feel like I don't know why, but I always feel like there's just a bunch of of us. And when I started to see the comment area, everybody was like cheering up, like 
saying nice things about Roscoe being free and being the concert. I'm like, man, there's a lot of us. It's just all around the world, but there's a lot of us like that that, that really appreciate Neptunes, NRD, and of course, Clips, Roscoe P, and Ebliva. Yeah, it's awesome to see. Yeah, definitely. And I think, you know, what also probably helps is the fact that, you know, Roscoe, he did quite a few tracks with the Neptunes, you know, and the majority of them unreleased. But I think if, you know, you're a fan and you sort of follow the Neptunes via different channels, you've probably heard a lot of those unreleased tracks sort of over the years. And there's a lot of, you know, he did a lot of good stuff. A lot of that stuff, yeah, you yeah. know, could make it onto albums or should have made it onto an album, which obviously, you know, never unfortunately happened. But yeah, I, I would love to kind of um, see him do really well again and, you know, really kind of get back into music and start collaborating with. Yeah, 100%. And maybe get some, at least the like the, the old track, like the Neptunes produced tracks that we only got the, the, the bad version. Like at least we got the mastered, version of that those because there's some very good tracks on, on from back in the day like i i i think one of my favorite ones is the i think he's called it going to war yeah do, do you know that is like the the guitar and the a little drums yeah pretty amazing and yeah i'd love to hear some of that stuff kind of yeah how it was sort of meant to be but obviously the problem we have <laughs> It sounds terrible. The problem, the problem with Pharrell, um, is that yeah, you know, twenty years have gone by, and we know he's a man that doesn't like to um, dip back into the past at all. So I don't know if he'd ever be you know interested in kind of reworking those things or doing them again. But either way, I'd you know I'd really like to I'd like to hear what a a modern day Roscoe Neptune's type track would be. I think that'd be really interesting because Roscoe still has that really like individual, really different kind of flow of his really sort of off yeah, yeah, yeah. and a bit kind of all over the place. And I think like a really, um, a really good, really hard, like Neptune's beat, I think would, you know, behind a Roscoe track would be brilliant. Yeah. No, I would love that. I, I really like uh, Roscoe's flow. Like he, he, it sounds like spoken poetry. You know, yeah, everything is relatable, of course, but it, it sounds like that. It sounds like he got the beat and he's just trying to speak his poetry and and doesn't quite fit like how our how our ears are used to it, but at the same time, it fits perfectly. I don't know that's, how to, yeah, that's the crazy thing. Like, when I went back the last couple of days and listened to not just this but some other stuff as well. He's out of the pocket. A lot of stuff doesn't rhyme as well. And you think like it shouldn't work, but it does work so brilliantly. It all somehow comes together and just yes. sounds brilliant. It really does. Yeah. I would love to see like those rap. Um, there's those, these guys on, on YouTube. They always like put all the, get the verse and start to, to pinpoint the the where is rhyming, where's the metric and everything. I would love to someone to do that, just to just to everybody to see. That would make someone's head explode. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like because we we are listening to it, and sometimes we get the lyrics and start to read it. But I'm sure there's a lot of hiding gems that we can figure it out at, at first listen or two after two listens or after whatever. No. Yeah, he's pretty good. He's pretty awesome. I uh, can I just add something? Yeah, I was talking about the 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 movie and the series that I was that I was watching, and I saw the the his name uh, was inspired by the name of the the series is called the Dukes of Hazard, and the sheriff, his name is Roscoe Purvis Coltrane, or oh, Roscoe yeah. P Coltrane. Yeah. yeah. That's it. And I, I was saying that I, I, I saw on the movie because I think Ben Stiller did a, a remake with some other guy. I don't remember. There was a few years back. Yeah. 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 I think it was like middle 2000s when the, the movie came out. So, yeah. Classic TV show. Not quite a, a classic movie, but yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. 
But let's have a chat about the uh, this track specifically. So um, I'll go through some of the the basic stats that we've got on this. There aren't many out there. But it was the lead single from um, the Neptune's Clones album. Uh, it came out on the 29th of April 2003. So, yeah, nearly 21 years ago. Damn. Chart-wise, didn't do an awful lot. Made 58, number 58 on the US Hot R&B Hip Hop Billboard chart. One of those, you know, sub-charts. And then the video, the, I think the official video is on the Clips' Vivo YouTube channel, which doesn't get used for anything anymore. I think every artist had a, a Vivo-branded channel at some point in the, uh, in the 2000s. So the video sits on there with... 3.4 million views and it was directed by Benny Boom as well who's done I think quite a few videos for the clips and for Pusher and stuff like that over the years as well so a good pedigree in terms of someone directing it yeah now the track tell me why you picked this one and why you wanted to do this one yeah um, the first the, when you asked me uh, the first track that I thought was beautiful but I immediately remember that you 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 and uh, Dave already did it, and I remember that because Dave say he he hates beautiful, and I hate him for that. Like, <laughs> how? What do you mean you hate beautiful? But let's back on track. Like I I, I wanted to pick beautiful because the video was filming in Brazil. And when I thought about it, like, oh, Hot Dan. And I don't know if you ever noticed that, but Hot Dan, the video of Hot Dan was, is inspired by the, the movie City of God. Like the way they film, the, the guy always photographing, the way, the, the, the way like, in, at the end, when they are filming Roscoe P in 30, 60 degrees, and, and the last shot is a, is a picture of him and his home is, in the back of like that's so city of God. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna uh, choose something related related to Brazil as a good Brazilian, <laughs> <laughs> representing well, definitely. Yeah, yeah, always. So yeah, I, I, I and, and I think is it's probably my second favorite uh, song and video from the from the Clones album. Of course, the first one is Fronting. And and I I remember because the City of God uh, I think was was out in two thousand two and the video was in two thousand three so it was it was pretty easy for everybody from Brazil like when they saw the video everybody was like oh that's City of God that's inspired by City of God it was pretty easy to to notice so of course that that they have a sentimental sentimental value for me you know. <laughs> it runs deep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think not everyone kind of remembers and realizes that um yeah, this is kind of a remake, a remake of uh Cop Down, which was on Lord Willing that Eclipse put out um before yeah. that. And originally it was gonna be called God Damn, but you know, they were told you're not going to be able to market that in certain parts of America. That's not going to uh, sell very well. It's not going to play very well on the radio. Um, so you need to yeah, change yeah, it, yeah. please. So originally changed to uh, to Cop Down for Lord Willing. And then obviously a new version for the clones um, came in, which has the same beat, the same hook, obviously the same people on it, but just different, different verses, basically. Yeah. But I have to say, going back and listening to them, the last sort of few days, I prefer the clones version. Yeah, me too. One hundred percent. I just think you know that they've obviously not that the the Lord Willing version is bad or anything. It's actually a really good, really good track. But I think you know when they've gone to kind of remake it for whatever reason, they've probably looked back at those verses and gone, "Okay, how do we take it to the next step? How do we improve this already really good track?" And that's where, obviously, like, you know, all four of them have just bought, like, their A game. And, like, yes. a amongst the track itself, I think, flows are great. The content is really good. You know, you've got, like, uh, 
the second half of Malice's verse, like his flow is brilliant. We've obviously already talked about, you know, Roscoe's, which is really good. Pushes is like one of those verses where it's so descriptive, you can like picture it in, in your mind, what he's talking about. And then you've obviously got Ab, Ab Liver as well, who one of the most successful and greatest and underrated and under the radar hip hop writers and rappers of the last 20 odd years, you know, 100 percent. Cause probably not everyone's aware that, you know, Liver, despite, you know, he's an, an artist in himself, but he's also the ghost writer and I'm putting ghost writer in air quotes for Kanye, for Dr. Dre, for, all of your favorite rappers, he's the one writing a lot of their songs. Yes. And like, you know, his own verses. And again, his flow on that, the first part of it where he has those like little pauses in the the, the breaks after like four or five words, just like it sounds so good. Sound Even today, it's a song that like, it's aged well. It still sounds good. It still bangs. There yeah. still isn't anyone out there flowing like Liva, or Roscoe, even to this day. Yeah, yeah. Well, I agree with you one hundred percent. Like, I was also like listening to it this week, and the flows. I, I mean, for me, I, I think the flow always, always like pop up for me. Like, is always the most important thing for me, especially when I listen to hip hop like in, in English, because it's the first thing that I notice, like it's the beats and the flows, of course. And then I, I, I start to pay attention to the lyrics. I go to rap genius to see what they mean, because sometimes it's some crazy slang from the street that I don't know. Yeah. And, but the flow of everybody's flow is incredible. Everybody's flow. And I'm going to be a fanboy just to mention like how Pharrell getting the track and get out is so smooth. It's, it's, it's crazy. Like you don't even notice mm -hmm. because you, you, of course you notice because it's, it's a different voice, like Pusha T's rhyming and all of the Sunday like Pharrell pops in, but it's so smooth. It's like so perfect. It's like a, I don't know. It's like Lego, you know, like the pieces of Lego, like just, just piece together and, Oh, and, he, and his flow is also incredible. It's just like, and, it, and it's like four bars. It's two, four bars. So cool. And and and, and I think that his verse is even special because in the, in the video, he's not even wearing BBC, but he's talking about it. And, and every time they... I was going to mention that, yeah. He had one of like, he has a track jacket. I can't remember the brand. And then that red T-shirt, which... We've seen him wearing other videos and just wearing generally, I think, around that time as well. Yeah, I, I think the name of the brand is Spitfire. Yeah. But he obviously had BBC at that time. They obviously had Season Zero at least. I can't remember if Season One was out at that point. And obviously he mentions it in the track. But it's a strange thing for him to yeah, yeah. reference it but not be wearing any of it, especially at that time as well. Yeah, exactly. And every time that I I, I hear his verse... On this track, I always think about. Remember when, when in Can I Have It Like That, he's walking and an explosion is going behind him. Yeah, I always think about that. That's so such a superhero line. Like he crashed the Rolls Royce and he came out of it and like perfectly well, wearing BBC. Like you can see in slow motion. <laughs> You know, in your head, like, it's so good. It's so good. Like, it's not my favorite, it's not my favorite verse on the on the track, but I just love how he get in and get out. It's so smooth. It's one of those things that if somebody else did it, it could seem a bit jarring and it could take away from the verse slightly, maybe. But like you say, it just pockets in there sort of really nicely. And it's only a couple of bars. He says it and he's out. And that's it. Yeah, exactly. And you're just like, what? What just happened? So cool. Yeah. And talking about the 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 gear that he wearing, like I also think it's so cool that in the video he's in a Rolls Royce and he's wearing like skater clothes. 
Like what? Like so incredible. I I think that's that's one of the reasons Pharrell was always a a fashion icon because he were like with skater clothes wearing these huge chains, like very expensive chains, all, almost all, all the time wearing like very expensive watches and and in this video he's like in the hood wearing a with a Rolls Royce wearing skater clothes, like such iconic. And like he said, like he handing out style for everybody. And he still yeah. do twenty years later. It's crazy. I think that's you know part of his appeal as well over the years. He's able to kind of mix that streetwear skating type clothing with, you know, ultra luxury and combine them yes. together. And it's still, you know, he still does that now at times. You know, you'll see him wear the most ridiculous, over-the-top, expensive Louis Vuitton head-to-toe thing, all his new bits of jewellery, all of that. But then he'll have, like, a curry-up hat on. Yes. So he kind of, yeah, he mixes and matches, like, so well. Yeah, 100%. And I think he's one of the few that, that, that does that and also does that well. He can definitely, he pulls it off very well, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of Pharrell styles that I always look like, I could never do that. <laughs> it's like 99% of them, I think, for most of us, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We just But it's even, just even like the glasses that he's had, you know, he's got what, two pairs of those, are they Chanel glasses? I can't remember who made them now, with, with the diamonds around. So there's the... Uh, like almond shaped ones, and he had the heart shaped ones as well. And yeah. like just the glasses alone, like none of us could pull that off. Maybe you know your handsome face, you probably could. But then to <laughs> like you know pair a pair of sunglasses, sunglasses which must be worth you know more than most people's houses, with you know then a human made or curry up hat or whatever it might be. It's like yeah. He does it so well, pulls it off effortlessly. Yeah, 100%. And we will get to more of that uh, Louis Vuitton talk, I think, at the end as well. There's probably a, a bit to catch up there. Yeah. Ah, and, and about the music, like, I was noticing, I think the, the, the piano is a little bit stronger. I don't know how to describe it, but I, it feels like it has more piano on it. You mean in the mix, like, versus the original? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I hadn't noticed. I'll have to go back and give that a listen. Because I know like when I re-listened to it back earlier and I was picking out bits of in- you know instruments that I liked, let's say, the piano was really heavy in the mix in parts of uh you know the latter one from the clones. But yeah, I hadn't noticed that in the where you know whether it was or wasn't in the first one, so I will um I'll have to go back and check that out definitely. Probably because you've got younger ears than me. My ears don't you know register stuff like that anymore. They're too old. <laughs> no, but we are. Like it's not you. We, we are. <laughs> to be yeah. To be fair, we, we are the same generation. <laughs> so when you're talking about you being old, you're talking about me. <laughs> yeah, but look, look, I'm I'm sat here without a haircut in a while. Like, all my grey hair and like you know, I look old and yeah. I feel old now. You're still looking like you're twenty something. You're all right. You've got away with it. Yeah, but I feel old already. Like, my body's just, like, quitting on me. (laughs) My body's like, you cannot do that anymore. Like, just stop it. Okay. I'm I'm glad it's not just me, then. (laughs) We're suffering together, bro. I got you. (laughs) That's why we need need to have our birthdays together every every year like we did last year, just so we can, you know, feel old together and drink drink champagne together and forget about the, uh, the age. (laughs) <laughs> yeah 100 percent. back to the video yeah. um what else have i got <laughs> in my notes here i'd like the kind of the, the general sort of story behind the video so you know at a very high level it seems to have been you know roscoe is on the run he looks like he's in a a one-piece kind of prison uniform type thing um being chased by police and then you see all of the other guys are being sort of surveilled in some way or they're being harassed by police. I think we see malice, you know, pushed up against a fence by police and harassed and, and stuff like that. And 
and then like you mentioned already, it gets to the end where they're obviously you know, chasing Roscoe and they have that kind of front body camera on him, which was becoming sort of popular around that time as well in movies and in music videos and in TV shows and stuff. And then, you know, he has what, five or six cops or something behind him chasing him and then runs into that, you know, rather large group of um, of his friends that are just hanging out in the middle of the street. It just happened to be there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, it's such a... I think it's like... It, it looks like a document... Like a hood documentary. Like, I remember... Like, I came from the hood in, in Brazil, and I remember that, like, a lot of people just hanging out in the street, and when the police, like, when you hear the sirens of police or someone, somebody, someone being chased down, everybody was like, no, no, nobody was like hiding. Everybody wants to see what is going on. Like, guys, <laughs> you can get, you can get shot. <laughs> Everybody, no, I don't care. Maybe it's my cousin, you know. <laughs> so it's so realistic. But yeah, what what I understand, what I was going to mention is, you know, it, it really is shot in like a rough part of Philadelphia. It really is shot in the hood, which I always sort of found quite strange with, like. Pharrell and some of the, some of the videos he's appeared in, like that one, and then there's who else? They're like ASAP Ferg and the Game back in the day, where he does turn up in these locations, which you wouldn't expect him to want to turn up in, which literally in the middle of the hood, with his Rolls Royce or with his Ferrari. I think exactly. the Game video, he had his Ferrari with him, one of his Ferraris. But obviously, he has that much sort of you know love and respect from the community and people around him that, you know, nothing, hopefully nothing's ever happened and nothing would ever happen. But he kind of just, you know, gets away with it. And that's a, that's a big flex that is, you know, going into like a really rough part of Philadelphia with your, your Rolls Royce. <laughs> exactly. I, and, and as you're mentioning, like I started to think about like, I think my favorite Pharrell videos or, even the videos that he's just uh, featuring on it, like is the the videos on the hood. Like I, uh, I think one of my favorites, like I ain't heard of that of Slim Thug. Like the second version, oh, I think the both versions, right, uh, is in the hood. But the second version with Hyper Williams with the screen like in the middle, like is one of my favorite ones. And and also he got his Rolls Royce because he was driving around his. Rolls Royce in all all of those videos back in 2004, 2005. And I always think it was so cool. Like Pharrell, he, I think Pharrell is the kind of guy that he kind of came from the hood, but he doesn't, his persona doesn't, doesn't portray the normal person from the hood. So I think that's why I, I think it's so appealing also. Like this contrast of being this skater guy with such a expensive car in the hood, like rapping or singing in rap songs, like this contrast that Pharrell always portray on his music on in on his videos is always so appealing for me and I think for a lot of people. Yeah, definitely. I think you know his kind of background is like you say, what uh, helps him appeal to so many different people because. I don't know if he's necessarily from what I'd class as the hood. I think it was, you know, fairly middle class ish background that he had. You know, his you know, mum's a teacher and stuff like that. But, you know, some of his best friends are from those slightly rougher areas and he has his toes in those areas. But then at the same time, you know, when he's in high school, he's in band camp, which you don't really class as a particularly gangster, let's say. Yeah, maybe you do nowadays, but I think you know if I was a kid in in high school and I was in band camp, I'd you know get the shit kicked out of me. Let's say you're not one of the cool people, but he's managed to kind of do that and do all those different things and still remain, you know, cool. You know, he's wearing the skater clothes, early Neptune's days. He's dressed all in like you know Ralph Lauren cowboy boots and hats, and you know we have like mustache Piera and all these kind of different eras and different influences from his background. And yeah, that kind of, I think that's what gives him that really sort of broad appeal. 
Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. And one other sort of thing I've got in my notes here that um spotted in the video, a very young uh, Meek Mill. Yes. Yeah, I remember like I think it was like five years ago he mentioned it on Twitter or something like that, right? Yeah, I think he did. Uh, I think he was, I don't know, 13 or 14 or something at the time. And he lived in that area and heard there was a video going on. So I think you see him at, hold on to my notes. The one minute, 45 second mark. He is the the young sort of teenage kid doing a wheelie on his uh, on his bike across the shop. So yeah, a young Meek Mill in there as well. Nice. And I think he said that, uh... He tried to spit some rhymes to to the guys. Yeah, and they were like, "Oh, okay, it's cool, and you can be in the video." Uh, so cool. And one one trivia about the about the song is like I think uh, I think like two years or three years ago, like Kin- uh, what is his name? Uh, I think I put it in my notes in here. Let's see. Oh yeah, Kenan. There's a, a sketch in, on Saturday Night Live that is called the Hot Damn. And it's basically just two bartenders that are saying like, oh, do you know this song Hot Damn? And it's a cheerleader song, something like that. And I think and the joke on the sketch is like, everybody knows this song. And Keenan's like, no, I don't. The only song that I know is Hot Damn by Cliffs that came out in 2003. <laughs> I haven't seen that clip. I'm going to have to look that up. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna send you. It's like I, I, I and I, I searched it and I, I put, I put it on my notes. Uh, the minute mark is three minutes and fifty seconds. You can see that after the the, the sketch is nice. is shit. Yeah, but that was nice to to see. But it's just got a little reference in there. Yeah, yeah. If you've got a link, send it over, and I'll um I can add it to the show notes as well, so people can can go. Oh, okay, of course. Just, just one, uh, 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 one more trivia. It's not about the song, but it's about clips. I was watching the new Donald Glover show, like uh, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, and there's a, a scene that he mentions the clips. Like I think he's like, the song is uh, riding, riding, riding round shining. Riding right around shining, yeah. From hell, heaven, for, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the song is playing in the background. And the guy that he's like in the in Donald Glover's house, and he's like, "Oh, what song is this? Is that Eminem?" And I was like, "What? It's not Eminem." And Donald Glover character say like, "No, no, no, that's clips." And I was like, "Oh, that's awesome." I think I saw a few people sharing like a screenshot of that. Yeah, might have even been yourself as yeah. well. Yeah, I saw that kind of going around. Is the um before I get to my last point, is the TV show actually any good though? I like it. I really like it because I really like drama, <laughs> and and I think it's really different from from the movie because the movie is really uh, is an action movie, you know. And this one is more like it's an action movie, but also talking about marriage and the marriage life day day by day. And I really like it. Okay. It's got your seal of yeah. approval, then. I will have to check it out at some point. Mm-hmm. Hope you like it. Good. If I don't, I'll tell you. Don't worry. <laughs> uh, one very last point I wanted to mention that I had in my notes, which I, I really liked in the track, is the the little sample of um, what happened to that boy during Abliver's verse. Yes. Again, just the way it slips in there. And then just transition straight back to the to the hot damn beat works brilliantly, really, really yeah, well. So far, so far. And again, had had that been kind of produced in not such a sort of slick way, again, it's one of those things where you could, you might feel it was being sort of shoehorned and pushed in there, and you would notice the break at the the start and the end of it, but it just slides right through. And it, yeah, sounds really good. Really nice little sample in there. Yeah, exactly. I think the this sample, like this, the the they introduced the way they introduced the the beat or what happened to the bone. That song is the same as Pharrell's song as Pharrell's verse. Like it just came in sliding so perfectly in the way they and 
slide in and slide out like perfectly like so good and if you think about it like i was hearing after after i was hearing like hot damn i was hearing what happened to the boy and the the beats don't even like if you if you show two of those those songs for for someone that doesn't know the neptunes they're gonna say oh there's totally different producers because it doesn't sound like it at the same time like they managed to put it well like all together it's marvelous and I'd, i'd love to kind of understand like how that kind of came about was the line written first and then there was a discussion like okay can we get a snippet of the beat in there or was it, you know, just kind of being played around with at the same time and they put it in there and then, you know, the, the kind of lyrics came up after and on the top of it. I'm assuming by the way it's kind of done, it would be the words were written first and then they tried to work out how to put it in there. But the fact yeah. they did and it still fits into the verse and live is like flow so well as well is like, yeah, really good production, really good use of a sample and it works, yeah, excellently. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree 100%. That's a good question. I would love to to know that. But I agree with you. I think the lyrics came first and then they were like, oh, okay, let's put it together. I will um, I will harass Abliver at some point and ask him. He does occasionally respond to, uh, to messages that I send him. So maybe I can ask him that and we can find out. Yes, please. All right. Anything else you wanted to mention on this video and on this track? No, but I gonna. I want to ask you, like, uh, was your? Uh, you already said that Hot Damn is your favorite favorite version of the song because previously they put out Hot Damn. But who's your favorite verse? Like, do you have a favorite favorite verse? I think they're all excellent and all very good in their own right, and they're all very different as well. And like to like again, I was thinking of this earlier because I think it might have been you or somebody said like yeah, I think it might have been you. You said like ask ask somebody we were talking about like you know what their favorite verse on there is. What's the verse? Um, and I was thinking, okay, well, what what would I say? And I was listening back, and like I say, I could argue for any one of those verses if you made me. If you said right, argue for Push's verse, I could or Malik or whatever. But personally. I'd go with Ablivers just because that kind of that part of it where at the start where it just stops and pauses and breaks and like the, but the flow is just so good. It's just so good. And it's no wonder he's like so talented in writing for so many like big names these days. Um, and he can like wrap his ass off as well. You know, we hear yeah, him, like, yeah. on that. He's been on, you know, he's been on loads of clips tracks over the years. I think I've seen him live with the clips once as well. And he was really good. So yeah, I'd go, I'd go for the live of us. What about you? Yeah, I think I, I'm going to with Malice, Malice verse. But just because he has this, this line that I always is America. Every time that, that I hear this line, this particular line, I always smile a little bit when he say like, I'm not enjoying life. I will live in my childhood. And he starts to talk about like reference, like toys that he has as a kid and comparing to the toys that he had right now at, at that point on the video. And I was like, man, that's just because it's, I think, I think it's like, that's so natural for everybody, especially men. Like we always, when eh, eh, almost every man, when we got older and we start to get money, we start to get things that we would like to have when we were kids. And here's talking about like, oh, and and there's a double meaning and about childhood uh, with the word hood. So those things that he refers to is all the things that a kid from the hood would like to have or is having or is playing with it. And I was like, oh man, that's, that holds in my heart a little bit, you know, like, oh, oh, I know what you mean. Yeah, I like that part in his verse, which you kind of just mentioned where in the video, he sat on the really big truck. Exactly. And it's like the line is big chain monster, whip game bonkers, 
monster truck remind him of Tonka, because obviously Tonka used to make the cars, the big monster truck cars. And he's obviously sat on, like, you know, a real-life one. So it's got... Yeah, exactly. Like, you know, playing with those in his childhood to now, like, you know, owning one himself and having these crazy cars. And then, obviously, you've got them pusher later on in the in his verse, you know, talks about, you know, his, um, his Mercedes, you know, SL5 looking like the Batmobile, where it's yeah, all, like, yeah, blacked yeah. out. Every time I hear that line, I can always just picture Pusher doing that little like dance little move he does with it as well. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, in life, I also had a, a line on that on that song that is, I think, is one of the strongest, like mo- most impactful lines for me. Is when he said something about like his. Oh man. I don't. I didn't write it down the the lyrics, but I think he's talking about how he represents the dark faces like him, and when they are behind bars, they are like kind of looking to to searching for the sunshine. I, I don't remember the line, but it's something like that, and I think it's so strong. Like he's saying, like, "Oh, I represent the dark faces behind bars. They're always looking to searching for the sunshine." looking for yeah. for freedom or looking for something like like a good place on uh, behind the uh with uh, with sunshine you know what i'm saying so i always feel like yeah resonates me with, with me a little bit yeah i'm just looking at it on the side here yeah yeah that's it so my heart's on the sleeve for dark faces just like mine peeking through the bars hoping the sun shines on, sunshine, them. on them yeah yeah and one thing about live as flow and every song, like every, if you if you pay attention, his flow is so cool. It feels like he's one of the the rappers, the few rappers that I every time that I hear his flow, I always feel like the beat. If a producer is working with Liva, the beat can come after his flow because his flow is already banging you know what i'm saying like it's, it's like a beat like you were saying about the pauses like it's so instrumental you can work around so, him yeah 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 exactly and i think that's why it makes perfectly sense if they put the what happened to the boy beat after because because of his flow also not just because he mentioned what happened to the boy, because the, the flows like helps to introduce the beat into that song you know yeah, man. So I, I would say this is one of my um, one of my favorite clips tracks. It's a massively underrated track. Doesn't get yes. anywhere near as much recognition as it should. And I think part of that is because there are obviously two versions. And I don't think they did a whole lot. There wasn't massive promo for the. Um, at least I don't remember for you know when the video came out and stuff. Most of the, I think, promotional budget went on. You know, front end, obviously, which we probably yeah. rightly should have done. But yeah, you know, well made video, great track, underrated track, one that I still love to listen to to this day. And yeah, like four, four, you could say four or five, you know, really good verses that are still top notch, that have aged well and still sound great even to this day. Yeah, I agree 100%, especially with the lyrics. Like the, when we figured out that we're going to do, we talk about this song. I was starting to, I went to Red Genius, and there's not a lot of notes on there. So I, for some words, I had to go to, uh, what is the name of the site? Uh, oh, what is the name of the site? The website is called, uh, I think it's is Hood Dictionary. No, it's not Hood Dictionary. Like Urban Dictionary or something. Ur- or Urban Dictionary. That's the one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I started to go to Urban Dictionary just to figure it out. Oh, maybe this this word right here means something. And I started to and I started to make my notes about the the, the lyrics. And I was like, bro, these guys are poets, mm-hmm. like street poets, one hundred percent. But man, so so good, so good. Yeah. Like and and so timeless because if they put out this song right now, like it will be fire. Uh, everybody would be like, oh, okay, this song is pretty good. All the verses is good. All the raps is good. 
Awesome, awesome. This is, yeah, this is still a banger of a track. It's one of those ones that I think if it came out now, would probably, with the right sort of marketing behind it, it would probably do better than it did originally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Better marketing, maybe, you know, an updated video of some kind. Um, I think it would do really well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I agree. But, but also, uh, you have to think about, like, live uh, in Roscoe P wasn't big names, right? So to put clips that they were just starting now to get some recognition and just for real was at that time, at that moment, like for real was huge. Clips is starting to, to get some recognition. And in the video that you have those two rappers that nobody actually know, like we are, we are, we're starting to get to know them. So I think also that like, not just the, the bad promotion, but there's, they weren't, big names at that moment what i i didn't write it in my notes but i just remembered it like when it goes from like verse to verse of each each person it does like a still image of them and it has like their name and then like a description oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I think like pharrell you know, it says like pharrell the neptune or something like that but um what i really liked was like on the the ab liver one it says ab liver the man that will be king yeah you look at his kind of trajectory in the music industry and like while he's not like you know a household name and selling lots of records himself like as we've mentioned he, he's out there writing for everybody you've ever heard of you know probably half of your favorite tracks are in some way written by him if you're a, a fan of you know kanye or any other kind of you know, modern hip-hop artist yeah 100 percent. yeah all right should we move on to other news yeah of course let's go all right. So, yeah, we, we've been away for a couple of years, so I've not made any notes in terms of other news. I thought we could just chat in general about what's been going on. Okay. I think the biggest news of the last couple of years is Pharrell's new job. Yes. He is now taken over from uh, from Virgil, and he is head of, I don't know what the job title is, head of menswear, I guess, yes. at Louis Vuitton. And he's now living out in Paris, living the best life in Paris with his family. He's now done three shows, I think. We just had the third one, didn't we? Is no, it three? It's two. No, two. no, it's just two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, just two. The first one was on the bridge, wasn't it? On the Pont Neuf. Yeah, exactly. Yes. So I was thinking of two different ones then, yeah. And then we've just had the, the more recent one a yeah. few weeks back. Yeah, because after Virgil died, Louis Vuitton put out a, a show, but I think who directed that was Kit Super. Like, he's a designer. And I think that was, um, a lot of that stuff was from Virgil anyway. Yeah, yeah. The last kind of stuff that he worked on. A, a celebration of him as well as uh, the release of the the season's uh, clothes. But yeah, yeah. you know, we, we've seen Pharrell go in there. It was, uh, I think, quite a surprise to everybody i know like when virgil passed away there were i did see pharrell's name get bought up occasionally but i don't think anyone really thought it would be something he would go and do or want to do on a full-time kind of basis i think you know a lot of people assumed that while virgil's stuff had been quite successful and it had kind of helped the brand reach out into kind of new areas, new demographics and stuff like that. They were maybe um, going to hire somebody a bit more traditional that has a you know a background in fashion design from one of the other fashion houses. So, you know, it was quite a surprise that, you know, Pharrell got the job. But I have to say, so far, he seems to have done a pretty excellent job. Yeah, he has, especially with the bags. Like everybody went crazy with the bags. I think the the bags like they are super expensive. They sold out like in thirty minutes, something like that. Like what? And, and it's pretty cool. Uh, Julian and I went to Milan uh, last year, and we went to to the Louis Vuitton store, and the bags pff, looks incredible. Look, looks so cool. For me personally, I wasn't surprised because I think it makes sense. The, the, they picked Pharrell to, to kind of like um, 
what is the word the like it makes sense for me like that Louis Vuitton pick Pharrell after Virgil because Virgil was paying homage to Pharrell in a lot of his stuff when we or or be on Louis Vuitton on Off White so I think it makes a lot of sense but one thing that really surprised me uh, especially uh, on the the last show how how different it was from the first one you know like Pharrell like starting to make clothes like for, for of native people from 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 America and cowboys and everything that surprised me a lot not I'm not saying that I didn't expect that from Pharrell but uh, it was surprising to me because when when Louis Vuitton hired Pharrell to this job I thought I okay Pharrell basically is going to continue what Virgil was doing a little bit different but it's going to kind of do the same and on the first show you can see that Pharrell was paying homage to kind of what the things that Virgil done and some things that Pharrell did back in in the last 20 years like or paying homage like to his personal style and also to to billionaire boys club and the last show like he scrap it feels like he scrapped a lot of things off and like let's do this totally different thing that is something that we 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 as a as fans we always expect from frail you know because for always trying to do something totally different that nobody's doing but yeah the the second show is it was it was a surprise for me yeah but i think that that's kind of how sort of high end fashion works generally i think if you went to i don't know a dior show for example you know the the spring summer show is going to be one set of clothes one there's going to be a, a style guide there's going to be a a reference to it there's going to be an overarching theme but then as soon as you get to kind of autumn winter it's going to be completely different it's you know it's aiming a different type of year a different type of customer a different you know it has a different theme to influence it and i think that's what we had with you know pharrell i think the first one they were just kind of okay you're here like do what you want basically you know here's access to all of our classics you bring in whatever you want to do and just do what you like but i think for the second show the more recent one i think this is more along the lines of how i actually expected it to be so it's like you know there is a a focus on a theme which there generally should be and obviously this theme was you know work wear outer wear slash cowboy slash native american you know slash midwest type influence and obviously that very much showed in in a lot of the stuff that you know was uh, designed and worn but that's kind of how i would expect to see it and i think in you know his next show that he will do again it will be a complete 180 it'll be something completely different you know they're now well they've probably been planning it for months and months already it'll be here is our theme and i don't know it could be oceans of the world i don't know (laughs) and it'll be yeah it'll be a completely different thing but obviously it will incorporate that louis vuitton style it'll incorporate some of his references from other places but it'll be completely different but what i have liked about it which you sort of touched on there is at least you know in very much in the first show there were a lot of references to his background and his history there was obviously the princess anne high school uh jacket you know similar to what he used to wear in high school yeah and then some of the patterns you know there was a bbc pattern in there or a pattern that bbc have used as well he's taken a couple of people from bbc to louis vuitton with him as well oh really so there's yes there's not a massive surprise that they would you know, dig into some of the BBC ar- archives and pull out certain bits. And yeah, that's kind of what I like about what he's doing. He's, it's all new stuff, but he's, you know, very much utilising the classics and the back catalogue that he has not only at Louis Vuitton, but yeah, at BBC, at Ice Cream, working with Bape, working with all these other brands over the years as well. Now working obviously, you know, with Human Made, kind of, you know, bringing those all into that melting pot and, his design team as well is a big melting pot of what I like seeing mainly younger people 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. But people from, you know, people that work for Virgil, there's new people at Louis Vuitton, there's people that have come over from BBC, there's people that have come over from Adidas, I think, as well. And then obviously, you know, other people that have just been there for years and years that kind of know how it all works and can help piece it all together into like a, a cohesive collection, basically. Yeah. So, yeah, I think he's, he's done really well so far. I think even the media, the fashion media is, you know, picky and bitchy as they can kind of be. I think they've generally all been kind of quite on board and given him sort of fairly positive reviews as well. So it's good to see it going so well. But like I say, like I could definitely envisage him as that kind of creative person taking on that role, but I didn't think he would just because it's, it ties him down, you know, it ties him down to a company for a certain period of time. Also, we don't know what his contract is, whether it's two years, three years, just ongoing, whatever. I imagine it's probably two or three years. Yeah. In whether he'd, you know, want to move all his family out to France and out to Paris and stuff like that. I thought that might be a bit sort of a bit much, but he seems to have gone for it and, and fair play to him for for doing that. It obviously means we're getting, you know, less music, although we are getting bits and pieces. Because now he's you know concentrating yeah. on that stuff. He obviously as part of his contract did stipulate he has a recording studio next to his uh design studio <laughs> in the, the studio Louis Vuitton office, which Yeah. Which, which I guess when you're at that level you can kind of do. You can say, I want my own studio in this office as well. <laughs> so he's he's obviously you know working on bits and pieces. But what I've liked is his incorporation of his own music into the shows as well. So there's been very yes. old pieces. I think in the first show we had that old I Am Other theme tune thing that's been previously yeah. used, which was incorporated in. But then at the same time, we had like a new clip song and we obviously had Pusher and Mal modeling as well, walking the catwalk and then Pusher in the latest one as well. That was uh, awesome so to I'm, see. Yeah. So I'm loving kind of seeing those little references to, yeah, his friends and his background and kind of involving them in stuff and, Especially like even in the second show where you see Pusher as well, that was quite a surprise to me that he would kind of put him in another show. Ah, oh, but I mean they are best friends forever, right? Like, so it was it, it was kind of surprising, but also like it makes sense that Pusher is, is was there and Pusher is probably going to be on the next shows. One thing that I that I I just wanted to add about the the designers, like I read somewhere that Pharrell also like called some some Native Americans uh, designers to to help on the on the pieces. That was pretty cool because he has um. There's a guy that works on his team. Uh, I can't remember his name. I apologize. Whatever your name is, I follow him on Instagram. But he is um of Native American descent, and he has been the person that has been advising Pharrell for this collection, but also a lot of the um, Adidas stuff, which was kind of Native American influence with the oh, yeah. uh, the different hues. And they obviously, mm -hmm. had, they did, I think, one or two campaigns where it was kind of Native American focused. Um, so yeah, he works, there's at least one person on Pharrell's team who is of that descent and who works, you know, there is an advisor to to help Pharrell kind of um, work in that area and get the right references and speak to the right people and stuff like that. So that's really kind of great to see that he's got yeah, yeah so many course. different backgrounds and different people involved in the you know, the team around him. Yeah, because I remember like the the first time that I that I saw the Native American like clothes, inspired clothes, and I always feel like oh man, like he. It's always delicate to use those those reference because you always have those we always start th that, that that conversation about like cultural appropriation everything and when I saw he actually like called people that knows about native Native American culture and clothes and fashion and wh how, whatever how they call it he was like pretty awesome to to know that like, oh man Pharrell really is doing a great job not, you know not not just uh, directing these designs but also like calling the right people to represent 
the message that he's trying to to put out with his clothes. You know? So yeah, I, I don't imagine he did that for the hot and fun video, but it's good to see that the last few years he's uh he's doing it, <laughs> reach, reaching out to to the correct people to not uh nice. you know, upset anyone. Yeah, 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 no, yeah. Oh, I totally forgot about that. Yeah, good one. <laughs> I only thought that because I saw the video. The video popped up again on TV the other day when I was just watching YouTube. And I was just like, I don't know if this is appropriate nowadays. And it made me think of obviously <laughs> his show and stuff. And it was just like, I don't, one, I don't think he'd do it anyway nowadays because he's obviously moved on and, and stuff. But it's just like, yeah, he, he clearly didn't get any advice at that point. I don't think it's all very um, stereotypical. Um, stuff that yeah some people would obviously you know deep offensive uh then yeah. and now so yeah exactly i think he, he i think it was 2015 or 2016 like he did a cover for a fashion magazine and i think he was wearing the i don't know the name in english but that... but the headdress thing yeah, yeah 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 and he received some backlash because of that and i get there there kind of always will be i think when it comes to like an individual fashion shoot where you're you're not portraying a Native American person, you're not ripping off that kind of culture. I, and it, you know, bear in mind, I'm a you know, middle aged white person saying this, so take all of this with a pinch of salt. But you know, you, you're in a fashion shoot, you're you're representing, you're meant, you're kind of celebrating that culture. You're not. I don't think you know it wouldn't have been in his mind to be you know, they're, they're ripping it off. It would be to him, they're sort of celebrating it. And I'm sure he probably would have asked like, okay, why am I wearing this? What does it represent? And and stuff like that. But of course, you know, you could wear anything these days and somebody will inevitably complain about, about it if they don't know or understand the context or the history or the reasoning behind it. Yeah, of course. And, and of course, like, since we are fans, we know, like, the intent that Pharrell put on his clothes and on his brands, and and we know that if he are if he's are going to use like Native American reference to to do a fashion show to a, a huge brand and probably the biggest luxury brand of the world, I think like we as fans we know. Pharrell. like we know like he he's talking about his represent not 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 represented but he's putting like a spotlight on native americans for for a, a bit of time right now like i remember when he did the stuff with that with uh, adidas like i remember like he went to to a tribe and talked with everybody he did a, a kind of an interview with them talking about the issues and everything it was pretty cool to see so we are fans and we know that the Pharrell is doing this, like kind of not just using, but he also like putting a spotlight on this culture, on these people. But of course, like yeah. it's going to be people that is not, they are not fans and they are going to like comment on the internet or Instagram or Twitter saying like Pharrell is doing uh, cultural appropriation. And especially like he's doing through Louis Vuitton, that is a huge brand. But I think that makes me think about sometimes we are too we are too rushed to rush to to criticize people when they do stuff. And sometimes we don't know the background, we don't know the intent, we don't know actually the story. And that's why it was even I was even happier to see that Pharrell like brought some some Native Americans uh, designers to to this project. It was pretty cool. So again, we'll, we'll ignore hot and fun. We'll pretend that never happened. We'll block that one. Yeah. Out. We'll move on. But yeah, you know, just <laughs> on that sort of point as well. It's like we have seen it with him previously. You know, we mentioned Adidas, but like you know, when they did the uh, the holy packs, so you know, based on the you know, the the Indian holiday, you know, he he went out to India with his team for a week. And they were there oh, yeah, doing yeah, yeah. the celebrations and, you know, speaking to people, learning what it was all kind of about, what it all sort of meant and stuff like that. So I think as with anyone, you know, when you're 
in that kind of business in any business really you you evolve and you learn and you you know make up for mistakes that you may have made in the past and he's obviously got a good team around him getting him getting him and helping him to do things the right way nowadays yeah yeah Pharrell and his team is pretty aware especially after like in 2014 2015 when he received some backlash for for magazine covers or I don't know not using a black girl on his album cover but actually it was a, a, a black girl on the cover so since I think I think Pharrell is so scared about those backlash like I don't know right now we are always going to make our homework before we put out some work out in the world so and, and I think that is pretty cool like that's the right thing to do you know like pay respect do the homework and then you put out some not just good quality products but paying homage to 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 a culture or to some people so yeah yeah that's pretty inspiring yeah definitely i think a lot of that comes down to you know pharrell is not just a music artist anymore he is a his name is a brand yes it encompasses a million different things from you know things of adidas to human race to human made to louis vuitton to bbc to the music to the films that he's attached to got me everything. So, you know, nowadays kind of, you know, one, one slip up and it, you know, when you're at that kind of level, it can tarnish a lot of, uh, a lot of good work and a lot of, uh, you know, opportunities and stuff. Yeah. And just like changing a little bit of subject, but not really, you, you just said about his mute, his involvement, on movies and I just remember like the one of the greatest movies I ever seen that is called it dude we're going to Rio <laughs> oh no no but but I, uh, I we don't have to talk about right now but we can I, I think we is a good episode to do like to cover like talk about well, that. Yeah, but that yeah, but that movie. would mean I ha I have to watch it again, and I don't want to do that. <laughs> I really don't want to do that ever again. Yeah, it's, it's so cringy. Like I think oh, I man. watched that movie like three times. I think the first time I watched it alone, and then I watched it with with Juliana, and then I watch I I show it to some friends in, here in Spain, and I watched it again. Yeah, it was super cringy. No, but I just remember that I put on my notes that that I think Pharrell, like because he went to Brazil in two thousand two, I think a lot of his stuff on the on the era was kind of related to to Brazil. So you got had then reference like City of God, the movie, and then he put out the he was the, at the same in the same year, right? Like I think dude, we're going to Rio is from two thousand three also, right? It was a. It's around that time, roughly, yeah, early two thousands, yeah. Yeah, and I remember he saying, uh, talking about like how milkshake from Kelis was inspired by Brazilian funk. So yeah. Yeah, I think he was. There was that period where he was going there quite a lot. I think for for holidays, but also you know video shoots and you know he did a number of um, magazine shoots there as well. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and obviously, you know, did this. And for those that aren't aware, because it's not, I think, you know, most fans will know, but there's probably, there's probably some out there that don't. Back in the day, um, while Pharrell was on one of his, his trips to Brazil, he or somebody in his team had this amazing idea that they should record, <laughs> they should make some kind of uh, movie. And it was called, yeah, Dude, We're Going to Rio. <laughs> And it's about his adventures on his way to Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. And yes, I rewatched it again a couple of years ago when I think probably a mutual friend of ours uploaded it somewhere and I hadn't seen it for quite a long time. And I sat down and rewatched it and my God, it's bad. Yeah. <laughs> like I can, I can, I can fully imagine that if you said Pharrell, you can pick three things that you can burn off of the face of the earth 
that you can remove all trace of it forever. No one will ever know you ever made it or did anything with it. I can imagine that would be in his top three. Because he tried. Mark me is, it's awful. He tried because I remember, I, I think, I rem if I remember correctly, I think the first time that the entire movie was uploaded on the internet, I think it was the director that put out on YouTube. And I think it was on YouTube for a, for a week or two, something like that. And I think the Pharrell's team reached out and said, like, deleted like immediately please and nothing yeah, it never but... officially came out and you know quite rightly so um yeah but if you are interested in it and you've never seen it before then you can probably search youtube and uh find it in various different parts but do be, be prepared to have something to cover your eyes and ears with because my god it is cringeworthy <laughs> it, yeah, it's one of those things that has not aged very well no, not at all. Like he aged like milk in the sun. Like, oh, pretty awful. Yes. <laughs> milk in the Brazilian sun. Yes. But if you ever want to do an episode about that movie, sign me in. I'm gonna watch that, take notes, go through. I'll everything. tell you what. <laughs> let, let's let's do this. I'll, I'll do a deal with you because no doubt we will. For those that don't know, myself and Rafa, we we see each other every now and again don't we you know maybe once a year you know there's a holiday somewhere and we try and meet up and stuff so i reckon next time we see each other whether it's here or in spain where you are let's get ourselves a nice big bottle of hennessy a few beers a bit of food yes please and you know let, let's let's do it in conjunction with that so we can be a little bit tipsy as we watch it, it won't make it. It won't make it quite so painful. Yeah, it's like this will make the the the, the whole experience a little bit easier. Let's get drunk yes. first. Yeah, yeah, I think it's gonna be perfect because we can trash the that movie as it deserves, and yes. we're going to be drunk while we do it. So yes, that's exactly. an awesome idea. Awful it's movies a, always made a little bit better and a little bit easier with uh, lots of alcohol. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do that then. Yeah. That's a deal. But uh, uh, talk, in talking about Pharrell's movies, like that one that he did, like is a short movie. I think it's like ten minutes or fifteen minutes, something like that. That is called A Pledge of Love. That one is good. I do remember seeing that. Yeah, quite a while back. I haven't seen it since. Yeah. Yeah, because I remember like the first time that I saw uh, a video of that movie, it was the part when the Sade Neptune's remix is on the is on the the clip. So it was like a two minutes clip, like showing like Pharrell interacting with this French girl. And the crazy thing about that girl that she's not even French. I think she's Latina, <laughs> but I don't rem I don't remember actually where country she came from. But she's portraying a French girl. It's pretty cool. That one is good. There's some homework for you then. You need to dig that out and give that a watch. And again, let's uh, let's add it to our list of things we can talk about one day. Yeah, yeah nice. I, and I think he did a, another one. But I don't remember how it is. I, I, I just remember like watching like back in the day. But it was like a very artsy one pretty crazy that I think it was something with the eye that he put out his eye or his eye fall off or something like that. Yeah, I remember it was pretty artsy and pretty trippy. I'm pretty sure that the, the person that had the idea for that is a short move also. So, and I'm pretty sure that the person that had that, the idea for that movie, it was, it was a drug user. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah, it was pretty trippy. Come from. Yeah, so maybe we can do that, like do a episode just covering Pharrell's movies and short movies. Put something in the comments if you'd like us, like to hear us uh, uh, do that, and then uh, let us know if you'd like us to get uh, drunk and do it, which I think would be uh, even more fun. Yes, I just want to do that drunk right now. <laughs> like, there's no other way to do it. <laughs> Um, what else did I have on my notes? I think that's pretty much everything LV we've covered and starting to go quite long on time. So let's bring it up to date. Um, 
just something I spotted this week, the last couple of days, which I thought was quite interesting. Having sold pretty much all of his jewellery in the last couple of years on Jupiter, Pharrell is now back to buying jewellery. He was at Jacob & Co, I guess, you know, at the weekend or last week or something to collect a new piece of jewellery. A human-made inspired ring, which has the largest, I guess it's canary yellow diamond in it that I think I've ever seen. Jacob does say in the video that this is the most expensive item that Pharrell has purchased from him. And let's bear in mind and remember that Jacob was the one that made all these kind of commissions of all of the the crazy NERD chains and BBC chains and everything back in Legend. the day, which kind of all recently sold on the yeah, Jupiter. So this ring, it ain't going to be cheap. What I did think originally, because Pharrell has always had that yellow diamond ring that he's always kind of worn, which I saw in person once and is like fucking massive. So I thought it was the same stone, but it has been maybe reset into a new uh, ring itself. But like I say, Jacob sort of says, this is the most expensive piece you've ever bought from me. So I guess it must be a, a new piece of jewellery. And just interesting to see yeah, Pharrell geeking out about um, obscenely expensive jewellery again. Yeah. Yeah, I think right now is it's like a game, right? Like a lot of musicians, rappers, producers are doing this crazy stuff, trying to innovate with jewelry. And and I think it's like it's the way Pharrell is still on the I don't know, the competition game, you know, the brag braggadocious game to say like, Oh, you got this? So look at my jewelry now. Yeah, I I think, you know, he, he sold all the jewellery, all the old jewellery and sort of said, you know, that part of my life is over. But I think there's always a small part of him in the back of his head where he he probably thinks like, OK, on the down low, I'm now going to go to Jacob and I'm going to commission the most expensive thing I ever have. Yeah. Looking at it, obviously, you know, like previously, you know, the big NERD chain full of, you know, um, diamonds and and other sort of precious gems and stuff this is just you know one ring one yellow diamond ring and for it to be more expensive than any of that other stuff like it must really be a special piece and the fact he does it you know he flexes on people just with a simple ring instead of like a big blingy chain or something just kind of yeah that's that i think that stage of his life that he's in now he's like yeah I can still do it. I don't need to be all showy and everything, but I've still got it. Yeah. I mean, he's a dad now. So he's like station wagon P, right? <laughs> like he said on that on the song. So hey, I think it's pretty cool how Pharrell is getting older. Like Pharrell is not getting old at all. Like he's getting older. You know, wise. Like, so it's pretty cool to see how he's managing to to still being cool, because I think right now Pharrell is only being cool for fans. And when we say fans, we're not just talking about us or talking about people from the forum. We're talking about like real musicians, like rappers, like they still to this day look up to Pharrell, you know? Uh, Tyler, uh, ASAP Rocky. Kanye, you know, like all these, his peers and people that came from after him, like, and especially now, like, the, the Y2K styles and fashion is having a comeback. I don't know why, because I, in my opinion, in my timeline, is the worst fashion era ever, and we are it, it, it bringing back some horrible, t- horrible things, horrible pieces. But of course, like the uh, Pharrell things, like is kind of coming, like especially the the the, the things that Pharrell did in, in the two thousands, is having a comeback. Not you not just fashion wise, like musical. Like you you see all these new artists like sampling Pharrell beats, Neptune's beats from back in the day. Not not really sampling, but basically using the the same beat, like not changing anything, just putting some new lyrics and some new 
melodies and everything. So yeah, it's pretty cool to see how how Pharrell is getting all these generations, right? Like I think he's going to his third generation, like he influence his third generation as he is still alive. Like it's pretty cool to see. It's not especially musicians, like to be able to do that. It's not it's not every day we 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 are seeing that. So it's pretty cool to see Pharrell still doing that. Yeah, and just to, to bring that back to LV that we were talking about earlier, um, the first LV show, we got to see the uh, the triplets all decked out in matching Louis Vuitton suits, which was uh, yeah. disgustingly cute. And they are all <laughs> absolutely exactly. gorgeous, handsome children as well, just like, you know, yeah. their mum and dad. Um, but that was really nice to see because obviously they've been kind of kept out of the... Uh, the media for many many years um we've seen you know rocket the last sort of few years starting to appear at more events with his parents and uh, be a bit more in the sort of spotlight but not overly so it was nice to see the uh the triplets out there at the events and we saw some publicity shots of them also you know in paris and stuff like that so yeah he's out there with the, yeah. the whole family old station wagon p now <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you know the names of the triplets? I have been told, but I don't remember. And that wasn't, they weren't 100% confirmed what I was oh, talking okay. about. Yeah, Juliana always like, she always say like, oh, you're not a real fan. Like, you still don't know the name of the triplet. What are you talking about? I I'm a grown ass man right now. I cannot search for everything. I'm gonna I'm gonna spend my day on the internet searching for children's names of something yeah. that I don't know. That's not weird at all, is it? Yeah, exactly. Like track the school that they go to just to see if you can. <laughs> I think I think between us, we probably know people that um that know what those kids' names are. Yeah, I'm sure we can find out, but I don't know if we'd be able. If we did find out, I don't think it would be right for us to divulge what they were anyway and, and say oh, yeah, yeah. what they were because you know oh, of course i think they clearly want to kind of you know give them some privacy and anonymity as well yeah no of course 100 percent. i remember the when we find out rocket's name i think was swiss beats that he was doing an interview on on some radio i think it was 2000 i think it was yeah 2011 something like that and he said shout out to Pharrell. he just got his first kid rocket yeah and everybody was like he didn't say his name was rocket right like everybody was confused because of the name but yeah it's a good name it's a good name i like it it's a good name it could be worse it could be northwest oh shots fired man it's a horrible name <laughs> i don't, I don't <laughs> I, know I, how I, you, how I, I don't know how it sounds in english for you because is your is your language but when i translated for Portuguese, it sounds horrible. It's like having a kid and name him, uh, I don't know, Tuesday or Monday. Oh, God. I, th I think it's, yeah. Uh, these are all these kind of names where you have to be the child of a celebrity to uh, to get away with it. Yeah, I think exactly. if I were to name my kid Rocket or Northwest or something, you know, my, my family and friends would, you know, quite rapidly give me a fucking slap around the head and tell me to uh, sort my life out. <laughs> And they'd probably imagine I was having some kind of breakdown or something. <laughs> exactly. Like like me, for example, I my name will, will, will be Bruce Lee. If it was for my father, my name will be Bruce Lee. That's horrible. <laughs> no, and I always say, uh, every time that I say this, people say like, some people, and not everybody, but some people say like, oh, but that, that is not a really bad name. Like, it's kind of cool. But when you say Bruce Lee da Cruz Souza, that is my entire name. Like, it sounds ridiculous. Like, are you, are you insane? <laughs> and my main, doesn't my mom go say, together, does it? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> God bless your mother. Yeah, yeah God bless her. <laughs> the one other thing I was going to mention in my notes as well was um, a friend of the podcast, uh, Jimmy Gorecki from the ice cream skate team. Nice. Uh, still doing great things over at Standard Issue. 
Um, he's been appearing on a few other podcasts recently as well. He's been here before, so if you want to go listen to that, go check out um, uh, the website, um, others podcast. Oh no, the others.net. Christ, I can't even remember my own website. The others.net. <laughs> that's it. But currently, Jimmy is, um, I think, in the process of moving house or something like that. And um, he's downsizing his wardrobe. So he's letting certain sneakers and certain bits of clothing uh, go on eBay. If you're a if you're a fan of Jimmy and his style and some bits he has, you know, at the moment I think there's a there's an ice cream skate deck on there. I think he had a BBC hoodie on there recently. Then he has lots of other stuff that he's obviously accumulated over the years from different brands, different designers. Uh, I think some of his own stuff as well, some custom stuff. So yeah, if you're a, a fan of Jimmy, then go check that out on eBay. He is, I think it's the Green Village is his username over on eBay. So get over there and stick a bid in on anything you like to look of. I think Jimmy's pretty overrated. No, under. Oh, sorry, sorry. Pretty under. Over, I was going to say overrated. No, harsh. cut it. No, no, no. Sorry, sorry. I got lost <laughs> on translation. <laughs> it's fine. No, it's fine. Let me rephrase that. I think Jimmy's pretty underrated. Yeah. Not just his style, but the, all the things that he's working on it. Like right now and in the past, like he did some pretty good stuff, like some pretty great stuff. And I think since yeah, he's yeah, not like, like he's not a musician or the spotlight on on him or on his name is not that bright, so people really slept on on it, you know, like overlook what he's doing. But it's pretty cool to see. I've got to say, I, I always look at I look at his like Instagram and stuff, and he obviously you know, when certain people wear like his items and things he'll post and you know you've got like lebron every pretty much every week wearing standard issue stuff when he goes yes. to the game as he enters the court jay-z has worn a couple of his items you know court side and stuff so when you've got jay and lebron wearing your, your <laughs> brand like you know you, you're doing something right definitely exactly Exactly. No, I was pretty. I I remember when you did the 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 episode with him, and I was like, I was not very aware who he was, but I immediately remember him from being from the ice cream team, and I started to pay attention. Like, I started to follow him on Instagram. And I was like, oh man, this guy is doing some pretty good stuff, some pretty big stuff. So yeah, yeah. And lovely guy as well. I must say, he is a lovely guy. He is. He is pretty cool. Like I remember, like I I made some question, some questions to him on Instagram, and he answered me. Like it's pretty cool. So yeah, shout out Jimmy. All right, anything else from yourself you wanna discuss? Oh yeah, today? I, I was like since we were talking about like uh, the Louis Vuitton collection and the Pharrell's jewelry and everything, I think one thing that that we should put you know, on this episode also is talk about like how Drake try to weaponize Virgil against P on those lyrics and and basically like he probably felt his felt that he should be invited to the show to the, the first Louis Louis Vuitton show and after that he's trying to like kinda going like against P and I did I was pretty confused about that. Yeah, I don't. I don't pay much attention to Drake and people like that, anyway. <laughs> but I remember when this this happened because obviously it involves Pharrell, and I did also see just on that point as well to show what a whingy little bitch he is. I did see he on Sunday he lost what two or three Grammys that he was nominated for. You know, he lost them, and straight away he was on Instagram going, "Wow, well, the Grammys are rubbish anyway. No one likes the Grammys." And he was crying every about year. It. Yeah, I'd, I'd rather be at my show in Tampa than be at the Grammys anyway. And it's like, yeah, you wouldn't have been saying that if you'd have won. If you'd won all three of them, you'd be going, no, the Grammys are amazing. Yeah, but yeah, because exactly. he lost them all. He was whinging like a like a little child. But yes, again, so for those that aren't kind of quite aware, um, kind of tying into some of this, when Pharrell sold a lot of his kind of jewellery as well a couple of years ago with the Jupiter auctions, Drake was in there and I think won five or six of the items, maybe. Yes. He won some of the chains. He won the 
the diamond studded Oakleys and various other bits and pieces. I think I think he had four or five items. Yeah. He seems to have a thing about buying memorabilia of musical artists. I think around the same time he bought um, a ring that was um, owned by Tupac as well. Um, yeah. But to be fair, if I had Drake's money, I'd be doing the same. I'd be like, Pharrell, can I buy all your clothes that you've worn? I love you. And yeah, I'd exactly. Pay money for them. So, <laughs> you know, can't hate on it too much. But yeah, so, you know, that happened. And I think he had a a couple of shots at, was it Pusher around the time again? Saying he was going to melt down your manager's jewellery or something, yeah. you know, referring to Pharrell's jewellery that he bought, which obviously he's not going to do because he's not a complete idiot. Yeah. But yes, and then you were saying he he uh, he was a, a bit upset about not being invited, was he, to, to the LV thing? I mean, that's what I think. Like, because uh, I feel like Drake was kind of involved with Virgil a, lo- a lot. Like, he was always talking with him, like they were friends, so... I think when Pharrell did the first show and invite and invited the clips to do the runaway and didn't invite Drake, maybe that was the reason that Drake got hurt. His feelings hurt as usual and started to when are when are his feelings hurt? Yeah, exactly. And I, he's I not think... whinging, whinging like a little girl. He's writing a song about his hurt feelings, isn't he? The time. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Like I think the thing about Drake, like he's always going to be that guy that he's always going to be feeling left out or from outside. Like I think like five years ago or maybe ten years ago when everybody was like a- accepting Drake as one of the goats, I think even there Drake was like, nah, I still need more. I still don't feel I still don't feel like I am part of this game. I, I still don't feel like as accepted as other rappers. And I think that's why he's always trying to prove himself. Like he's a, he's pity, you know, like he's trying to, to prove himself through clothes, through jewelry, to, to rhymes. And, and I think that's it. I think it's kind of sad because he doesn't need to, you know, he doesn't need to, to do, to do that. Again, not that I've followed that closely. I say I haven't even listened to the last couple of Drake albums, to be honest. Mm-hmm. I've heard little bits and pieces here and there. I do have them, but I haven't really listened to them. But I think that that's kind of what his problem is. Not me, and not that I'm a yardstick of what should be, you know, what's popular and what makes somebody good. But I think he wants that kind of mass crossover appeal where everybody likes him. Whether you're a teenage girl or a you know a forty year old guy or whatever, at least the impression I get, he kind of craves that from everybody. And I think there's a lot of people out there that just don't really care about him and aren't really into him. And you know, me personally, I think he's got a lot of really good songs. But again, like I haven't been bothered listening to the last couple of albums. Yeah, just like yeah, just just not not bothered, you know. And it's just one of those things and there might be good tracks on there that I'm missing but he's just that kind of artist where he doesn't have enough in the back catalogue and enough kind of going on for me to kind of seek out what his thing is yeah exactly it's because I think it's because Drake is the he's not aging well you know like for example like we were talking about the clips and I was I am listening to them like a lot in the last couple of weeks, not just because we are going to talk about how them, but also because I'm going to see them on Primavera Sound, so I'm pretty psyched about that. So, and I always like compare the Lord Willing with uh, Casket Drops, and I always feel like how evolved they they sound. The, the the things that they are saying like you can see they are adults now they are grown as men talking about grown as men things and drink drink is still the didn't get to that point you know so i think that's why people start to realize like really drake is still 
I still doing this kid stuff. Like you, you, you sound like a teenager. You, you look like a teenager. You sound like a teenager, and you're almost forty. Yeah, no, I think that that's a good shout. I think you could play me apart from like the really big popular hits. You could play me an album track from Drake, whether it was from fifteen years ago or last year, and I probably wouldn't be able to tell you what year it was from because they all sort of. <laughs> They sound quite similar. The content is the same. Most of it is about him spending too much money on women that he thinks he loves but doesn't. And and then, you know, all these kind of, you know, girlfriends he thinks he's had but hasn't. And like you say, you know, it's like listening to a teenager sometimes complain yeah. about their, their bizarre childlike love life. Yeah. I, I just don't think he's... Like you say, stayed with the times. He's not necessarily stayed relevant, maybe. And I say that just because, you know, his last album we put out, you know, it was with 21 Savage. Again, not somebody I listened to. Couldn't even name you one of his songs. But I know he's popular. So yeah. it's like, okay, is Drake sat there thinking like, okay, how do I get, how do I force myself back into the charts? How do I force myself back in front of people? How do I... F- get myself a Grammy nomination again. Okay, well, I'll do it with the person who I know who is really, really popular at the moment. I sort of jump yeah, of on course. that. Whereas he's not, you know, evolving and doing it himself. Yeah, exactly. No, I agree 100%. So it was pretty strange to to see and to see him going after P. Like, why? Like, for, from all people? Like, going after Pharrell? Like, Every time Pharrell talks about Drake, he's always praising him. Always. So, yeah, it was pretty disappointing. But, I mean, Drake is being disappointing for for almost 10 years now. So, yeah. <laughs> you, sound like his, you sound like his mother. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, not mad, I'm not mad at you, Drake. I'm not mad at you, but I am very, very disappointed in you. Yeah. And, and you've been letting boy. us down for 10 years now. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's time for you to sort sort your life out, young man. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I think I I I I really sound like his mom because I remember when Drake was, was starting. I I remember like talking to my friend. Oh, Drake is dope. Drake is cool. And everybody like, no, he's soft. Uh, he's talking about his feelings. Not that's not street enough. That's not hip hop. And I was like, man. But since I came from from like. My my background is like I remember like my teenage years like I was listening to Backstreet Boys and sing so of course when some guy merged these two words hip hop and boy band <laughs> related stuff like talking about feelings and girls and everything like, it, of course it was only right for me to to love it but for twenty years. It's almost 20 years now that he's talking about the same stuff. Oh, damn, bro. Like, evolve a little bit. So, yeah. Well, I'm glad, I'm glad we've got that, that Drake hates off of our chests. I didn't, uh, I didn't <laughs> expect that to happen, but it, it was an added bonus. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, thanks for that, man. I, I need to put out that. <laughs> That's what feel... his podcast is, Rich. It's just a therapy session where we can complain. Yeah, exactly. About Drake, basically. <laughs> So whenever you want to do an episode just hating on Drake, like sign me in, sign me in because I'm on it. We'll do that again at some point, I'm sure. All right, I guess we should wrap it up there. We're going quite long and I'm just dreading editing all of this tomorrow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. If you need any help, I don't know how I can help after that, but if you need something. You're, you're in and charge I'm of the gonna work pictures on the... and the creative things. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to do something, something cool. I was... Like I was do I was going to do a, a surprise, but actually like since it's something really like like particular for me about the, the artwork, but I was thinking about like do an illustration of P getting out of a ro a destroy Rolls Royce wearing BBC stuff. Mm-hmm. Well, I leave it all in your hands. You, you okay, surprise me whatever you want to do. You're in charge <laughs> of that. That's your okay. bag. All right, so let's wrap it up there then. So um, 
I will try and remember to put links in the show notes to all the things we've talked about people so you can head over there, check them out. The The show notes should be in your podcast player of choice, but if they are not for some reason, you can head over to the website, which is uh, theothers.net. You can find the podcast on all the social channels at Others Podcast, and you can find me online in most places at Steve R. Penny. Rafa, where can the good people find you and all of your artwork and stuff like that? Yeah, you can find me on Instagram at, at Rafito underline Zurich. And also on my sneaker posters illustrations that is called it Sneak Cartel. At Sneak Cartel, sorry. Nice. And again, we'll have links in the show notes for all that stuff so people can head straight there and hopefully give you some more money for your lovely bits of art yes please <laughs> yes buy my stuff but it's been good to be back been away far too long we yes, will man. hopefully be back in a couple of weeks time i guess same in. nice one in which case have a good one everyone and we will speak to you soon bye-bye yeah bye-bye <laughs>